Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a series of questions and answers. I tend to get a lot of the same questions just rephrased in a different way uh, by a lot of people. So I thought that this would be a good way to just sort of answer the main questions that I get and do it hopefully in a very timely manner. We'll keep this video as short as possible. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to answer these questions to everybody's satisfaction and it will hopefully help you out. So I'm just gonna dive right in. I have all of these questions here off camera. So we're just going to get started. Um, Diana asks, do you suggest boosting our posts to our business page? Facebook tells me that my posts are only reaching about 35 people unless I boost it. I have 1,800 followers, but it's like a ghost town. Thank you for your advice and help. Diana, this is a question that frustrates, I think, the majority of us. Um, it is a very frustrating thing. It's, it's frustrating to see our stats on Facebook, uh, <laughs> those of us who have business pages, because you can see how lousy our posts are doing as far as reach is concerned. Um, I have almost 5,000 followers on my Facebook business page, and I can tell you that I do not do boosted posts uh, very often. I will, if I do one, it it's at most twice a year and I only do it under one condition. It's if I have an event coming up, if I have an art fair coming up, if I have an art auction coming up that I need people to uh, see in a short amount of time, then I may do a $5 boosted post if I need to get information out to my current followers. I don't do posts that uh, say that they're going to reach people who may have an interest in my page, people who've never heard of me before trying to get new likes, things like that. I don't do those. Um, it can get really expensive. You know, you should be posting on a regular basis to your Facebook page. Uh, this type of thing is really good to do so that people know when to expect to see work from you. Um, it's usually like an out of sight, out of mind thing. If you only post once a week or once every other week, then people don't really get to know you. They don't get to really know your art. So it's important to create posts on a regular basis, daily, if you can. Um, I try to do mine daily, but I do uh, post several times a week. But if you boost every single one of those posts, my gosh, it gets so expensive to do. And artists already don't have a whole lot of money. So, you know, you would be better off using that money elsewhere. Um, I will give you an example of how I do on my Facebook page. If I'm posting uh, a progress photo of a painting that I'm currently working on, on a good day, uh, I will get about, I'll get, I'll get about 2,000 people uh, that will have seen that post by the end of the day. And I think that that's really, really good. Um, and that's without paying. The only thing that I do is engage with my customer base, with my followers. That's all I do to be able to gain that type of a reach. And uh, that means that I answer everyone's comment. Um, it is extremely important to do that anyway because, you know, for those of you who use Facebook for pleasure, you know, there's so much information that is brought to your attention on Facebook. If you commented on everything that you saw, you'd never be off Facebook. So people tend to only comment on the things that are important to them. And if someone takes that time to make a comment on a progress photo or, you know, any, any other post that I may put up on Facebook, then I like to reciprocate that. I like to thank them for doing that. And it's important for me to share 
that with a timestamp actually, this being August 1st, 2018, that with Facebook's current algorithms, the way to get your posts seen organically by your followers is through engagement. So what that means is Facebook is more likely to share your posts with your followers if it is relevant, if a lot of people are talking about it, if a lot of people are commenting on it. So your comments count also. If someone asks you something or mentions something, you respond in kind, that's relevancy, that's engagement, that's showing Facebook that this is a topic people are interested in, that people are discussing. So it's important to do that. That is all I do and I have a good success with reaching my followers through the simple act of engagement. So I hope that that helps answer your question, Diana. Um, this next question comes from, I'm gonna butcher this name, um, Aya Kem. 651 asks, I'm always creating and I'm starting to gain a certain group of following, but now I don't know how to make marketable artworks based on my style that people enjoy looking at. What should I do more of? That is a really difficult question to answer. Um, the only piece of advice that I can give, you know, the old saying, create for yourself, is absolutely true because if you create for yourself, you're going to be happy uh, doing what you're doing. If you're creating something that you don't want to be creating, if you're creating for other people, then you're going to get burned out. You are not going to enjoy it. Uh, and, you know, what's the point? Of, of doing it. On the other hand, I do understand that when you're trying to get your business off the ground, you want to create things that people are going to buy. Um, but unless you know who your target market is, that's going to be difficult anyway. So if you think that you're going to create art first that is going to be marketable and you don't know who you're marketing to, then you're not doing yourself any favors. You're, you're, you're creating work for an audience that you don't even have. So I guess my advice is first, you need to figure out who your target market is. And then if you search online for what is currently trending, Etsy has this remarkable ability to find out what is trending um, you can find out the things that people are currently interested in. Last year, I believe llamas were huge. Um, if you're not a wildlife artist, it's kind of difficult to, <laughs> to paint a llama. Um, but that's just one example. There are always colors that are on trend. There are always various subject matters that are on trend. Camping will be on trend. Um, you know, at certain points during the summer or glamping may be on trend. Pinterest is also really good for noticing and picking up trends. So I guess my advice would be to notice the trends and then try and incorporate trends into the artwork that you currently do. Um, that's really the easiest way because I don't want to tell you to create work for your uh, customer base because it just, in the long term, it, it just does not, it just does not benefit you as an artist. You need to do what you want to do and then find the people who are interested in what you are doing. Um, and if you still don't know what your style is, take this time and really just try and figure that out. Or just create what you want, post things up on Facebook and ask your followers what they think of what you're doing. Get a lot of feedback, you know, create polls. This also helps with engagement, which helps with the last question that I answered, what, you know, with engagement, then more people will see your posts. So you're really doing a lot of benefit that way too. So I know that's not really a great answer, but that's pretty much the only piece of advice that I really can give on that. And I wish you a lot, a lot of success. Um, let's see. 
Uh, Michael asks, one of your videos inspired me to check out and buy a Canon Pro 100 printer for my watercolors. And I apologize if you've answered this elsewhere, but would you mind sharing what paper you use? Uh, my printer is set up correctly and I've tried cold and hot pressed watercolor paper, not inkjet paper from Canon, but I'm not impressed. Maybe I should not compare them too closely to the originals. Okay, the first part of this question uh, being uh, what paper you use was also recently asked Someone else just asked this question. I don't have your name down, I'm sorry. But for everybody who asks what paper I use, I get asked this a lot. Uh, obviously, I use a, uh, a Canon Pro 100 printer, 100 series printer, which prints up to size. Their paper is 13 by nine, the paper that I use, which is by LexJet. That is the type of paper I use. I use their archival matte paper. And it's the size that I use is 13 inches by 19 inches. That is the largest size that it can print from. Mainly the sizes that I print uh, do not get any larger than size 11 by 14. So when I cut my 11 by 14 uh, print, from my 13 by 19 sheet of paper, it still leaves me room to print out five by sevens. So I hardly waste any paper at all. Uh, I really like that size. I really like this paper because it doesn't buckle. It holds the color, the ink incredibly well. The white on the paper is very vibrant. Um, obviously it's archival. Uh, there are a lot of really good things that I like about LexJet, and you can get that paper by visiting LexJet.com. Um, I'm, I'm not sponsored by LexJet. <laughs> I just really, really like their paper. Um, as far as the second part of the question, well, it really wasn't a question, uh, but Michael had said that his printer was set up correctly, and he's not really impressed uh, with the cold and hot pressed watercolor paper that he's, I'm assuming he's using that to print from. Um, and the key point here, maybe I should not compare them too closely to the originals. Um, I have found that when you, when people scan artwork into their scanner and then they upload that onto their computer, Sometimes people will expect that the scanned image, you shouldn't have to do any editing. Once you scan that image in, it should be just ready to print. I've never found this to be the case, at least not for myself. Maybe someone else has uh, another uh, more experience in this than I do, but I always have to edit, always, always. Sometimes not very much, um, but I, on average, at least have to do a few tweaks here and there. I'll have to boost highlight just a little bit just to make the, the white background whiter, to make the whites crisper. Um, sometimes I may have to boost the contrast just a little bit uh, in order to get my painting to, or get my print to look like the painting or my scanned image to look like the painting. I always have to sharpen it just a little bit because you obviously want it as sharp as possible and you might lose just a little bit of that even when you scan it in. So always expect to edit your scans before you print anything out. Um, I've always had to do this and so I highly recommend doing that. Um, okay, let me see. Um, what do you use? Lynn asks this question. What do you use for scanning? What is the largest size it can scan? And what is the largest size you can print? Okay, so I already answered what's the largest size I can print. Um, but what do I use for scanning? I use a three-in-one printer, also from Canon. Um, I've had a lot of success with Canon printers, so I'm, I guess I'm a loyalist when it comes to Canon printers. I use a three-in-one, uh, which means that my printer scans, it copies, and it faxes. I just use the basic the scanner, the scanner that's on my three-in-one. This is a printer that was under a hundred dollars, 
Um, and the scan size is, I believe, legal sized, which is, I want to say, 9 by 11 inches, 9 by 12 inches, whatever a standard legal size document is, that's the size of my scanner. So how do I go about doing my 11 by 14 paintings? Well, I, I do them in parts and then I stitch them together. So I will scan one side and then I will flip that painting around. I will scan the other side and then I just stitch them together using Photoshop elements uh, to create one beautiful scanned image. And it's quite easy to do. I'm planning a video on that to show you how to do that. Um, so if you have Photoshop elements and you don't know how to stitch uh, a couple of images together, I'm hoping to get that out soon. So, uh, but yes, that's how I do it and it works out beautifully and I've mentioned this before, but it saves me trips to <laughs> other places to have my images scanned that cost a lot of money. It, this pays for itself to do it at home. I don't have to go out and do it. So, um, I believe that is it. For right now so anyway I hope that this little question and answer video was somewhat helpful to you guys um, I would like to do more of these every so often because it saves me the time of having to answer things personally when I don't always have time to do that if you have a question that has not been answered today something that you have wanted to know please leave it in the comments section below and I will try to do another one of these videos when I get enough questions lined up, you know, four or five more questions lined up. And then I will do another video based on your questions. So leave them in the comments below. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. So I hope you have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye.